there beloved ascension pioneers and all you lovers of life out there so welcome to this month's ascension update i have some very important news to share with all of you but let's start right at the beginning which is this beautiful energy of this month which i want to walk through because um, this month is not just a month that you know brings a closure to a year but it marks a very special uh, it's almost like a special uh, direction for us and where the energy is guiding us in the near future. So as you know, I've been doing these Ascension updates for quite a while, and each one of them was specific to the energy unfoldment of each month. But it was also in relation to the inner journey of the Ascension Pioneer as this essence of a volunteer soul grows more and more into its blossoming phase. So I've recently uh, received this message and guidance that this Ascension update, in a way, it's a final one. <laughs> it doesn't mean my videos are stopping. It doesn't mean the mission stops because the mission never stops. Um, but as you know, I've been recently focusing more um, on galactic updates and bringing higher advanced information about what's in term waiting for us or what we're moving into the creation of in the near future as i've said so i wanted to create this ascension update as more as a walk through journey of everything we were sort of moving through and kind of like the way i used to do these updates will change because the whole idea behind it was that i show you what is important and what is specific for the inner journey for the inner path the inner hermit within us to dwell into so that in the beginning of each month which aligns us with the new specific numerological path we ourselves learn to align with the energy which we can then further integrate as you know so each month was like an unfolding journey and it still continues to be but why i am changing this or what i'm being guided by spirit to alter this slightly is because a lot of you, a lot of us are now embodying the ascension and we're going to move into a more progressed state of what is sort of, you know, beneath all of this. So it's something of the beyond. And it was my desire for a while now to focus more on this higher advanced star wisdom knowledge. And this will be a part of my new or more of it. It's already here, but it's more like a new approach to this mission, which is more expanded. As you know, this month and i've been already um, informing you about this is i'm working on this final culminating course uh, within my self mastery courses so as you know there's first the seven stages of inner initiation for the alignment with the sacred path of the pure wise one which then kind of leads you into the journey through the group collective and then different stages of the consciousness which starts to expand from from your center of self mastery and next year which is 2018 specifically carries the codes of mastery because it's an illumin year in a way it's a year of illumination and i will do a specific like i said more galactic update on the walkthrough through the energy of the year although as you know the potential is there and this is what i'm talking about the potentials that are there how it will be for each one of you of course is specific to your path and your integration um, but I want to say there's big changes coming and because of what we've implanted as the seed of this mastery, we're now starting to, you know, walk through or walk into this bigger picture. So this is what for me 2018 and what I was shown is all about because in a way it's the same and yet it's different because 11 is also a number of a portal so we don't just have a month or a gateway it's it's a whole year that carries this potent energy and yet it's also that the merging of the duality principles so that the polarization can be unified and everything i've shared so far is the seed that leads one as a spiritual in a way um an embodiment that leads you through these steps because as you know when you go to the very core and this is what we're doing now we're walking into this essence embodiment level is when you get to the core so many things that you were working on working hard for they simply start to fall away 
and all of a sudden you find yourself, uh, you know, you can find yourself in the state of asking yourself, but what is there beyond all that I've developed myself into or everything I've learned about or everything I've kind of created in this life or many other lifetimes, as you know, lifetimes are sequential. There are cycles, they're not linear, so they are in a way parallel to each other. They're, you know, consequently moving each and they're bleeding into each other within the principle of unity. So this means that in this final point of moving into your essence level, so many things now want to fall away. And this is why I'm now sharing with you that the way things used to be, even for me, will change. And before any change is really evident and apparent, there's usually a time of standstill. And this is why I'm being shown for this month. And we will go more deeply into this, what I've also been writing a little bit in my notes. Everything that I've been and we're contemplating on and channeling for this month. As you know, for me, it's it's an effortless effort, if I can call it like that. So a lot of things just come when I'm simply an open channel. But what I've experienced this month is a little different than what I'm usually doing. It's very productive. It's very hyper. There's so much coming through me. And it was very much that standstill point where you find yourself in this what's next you know and i feel i was energetically shown that this is where a lot of you are now and because we were so much uh, involved in this ascension process like i said now it will no longer be about ascension updates you know a lot of you you've 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 done this integration of the ascended self in the physical form this was the purpose of the mission of a volunteer soul to you know to get prepared to activate themselves so that it can exist as this pure channel of spirit embodiment on earth. So that's for me what new earth means is the the inner journey, it's the inner integration of this consciousness which you become a seed uh, as the Christed seed here living upon this planet. So um, imagine yourself when you are ripe, whatever kind of environment you're being put in, you know, the environment will be different. It will have different variables to it. But you, as that seed, that's, you know, you have in a way, you know, when the seed is being, we, we call it the seeds are electric. The seeds have their charge. You know, sometimes you come across a seed and it sticks into, into your fingers, you know, in the palm of your hand. There's a certain electricity about it because the seeds are simply so potent. It's like that electricity before life bursts out, you know, like the sprouting phase begins. So when you are in this high electric charge, which is what you become as a, as a master of life force. And this was something I was guiding you throughout the steps, those of you who felt this was your calling and your journey. And yet there's a time, you know, and I say a time where I could say there's a place and yet it's, it's neither of that. It's just a state of being. It's a state of existence when you are experiencing your potency at such a high extent or voltage of that electricity that in a way you will be asked to kind of kind of hold that potency, hold that electric charge so that before you charge physically into anything, which are activities, you know, goals, aspirations, whatever we're doing in our lives. So that will truly be the maintenance of that highest potency before we give our energy to things, right? Into situations or to people, whatever we're creating. So this was kind of like what the life force journey, what the life force mastery was, was guiding us into, was to exist at this highest seed potency level so that whatever kind of environment we will be put in and a lot of you will change that I was shown that in 2018 a lot of the assimilation of light codes was kind of like the first processing for many years for many of you and what's coming now is okay now you're being called here you're being called there and it's just a lot of shift a lot of moving energy um, but the pillar, right, the 11, which is the master gateway pillar, is that potency which makes you always have that structure, okay? So I want to say that I had the privilege in a way. It, it felt a little like a curse, but in the truth, it was a, it was a blessing because we were actually snowed in here in our Alps <laughs> um, very early this year. It was, I think it began happening in the middle of November, a little previously, um, a little before that. But what happened was, Winter came so early and I've been noticing energetic and weather patterns which coincide, of course, because it's a lot of it um, reflected if you can observe through conscious um, contemplation and if you have eyes of spirit to see that. 
But you will also see, of course, there's modifications that are external and they're artificial. But yet, if you have this inner eye and this connection with the essence of Gaia, which is the spiritual essence of the planet, you will notice how these changes are actually direct reflections of the energetic changes that we, as these seeds, were also a part of in a way, not just noticing them, but co-creating them in a way. So I wanted to say um, that now it's becoming more and more apparent what this is for us and why we were in a way trained through certain things, why we had to go and activate this and integrate that. Um, it, things are starting to make more sense. And remember, I've told you before that sometimes we don't know and we might feel confused, but it's not in truth confusion. There's a difference between confusion and non-guidance. When you're not guided, it, it means that the life force doesn't pull you in a certain direction for a reason. And that is why I was creating all these courses to help you, to assist you, to understand that so that you can tell the difference and really own your life force, own your spiritual embodiment, because the highest attainment of grace is when you become the living pure channel of Holy Spirit or you can call it life force of the infinite the all that is of this purity of, of, of life and creation moving through and when you get to the essence level you will feel that the meaning and this reason of life is so pure it is so essential and it is love it is that pure divine love and the awareness which is what I share here with the knowledge the awareness of this knowledge and more profound more expanded vision is what gets us there. The awareness is the means to the embodiment of the sacredness of being these vessels through this high understanding because I was shown recently how a lot of the things we needed to experience and move through were for very good reason. But once you are beyond it, that reason will kind of seal itself. It will be, you know, when you when you read a book, you seal it and you close it off. Sometimes you might go and reread it. I don't know. But in most cases, it's like that you seal it off. You don't keep it open in your shelf and you put it somewhere. And that is literally like that knowledge from the book being translated in, into your consciousness. And you carry now the essence of that book within you. So everything we were experiencing was in a way what cultivated that potency that electromagnetic charge of that seed and i was literally shown that the symbol for this month is the tree and i kept seeing the sacred tree like the tree of life the tree of wisdom and later on i started seeing the book and i was reading some um from my book i have this book of the ancient symbols and it literally, you know, it's a very similar meaning, the book of life or the tree of life and the book of sacred knowledge. Um, you know, there's many different names for it. Some people call it Torah. Some people call it, you know, in the Kabbalah and all these things. But it doesn't matter. It's the essence. And it's that sacred knowledge that once it's understood at the essence level, it's no longer a burden. Because a lot of us held knowledge and we felt, oh, I need to distribute that. I need to share that. And it's almost like knowledge in itself. When it's, when it's wisdom, it cannot contain itself. It cannot be a closed book. That's why we had to simply share all of ourselves. We, we needed to put all of, of the potency out there. And those of us who remain an open book, it means that we were the pure ones. It means the pure being is someone who never closes their heart, no matter how many times it was wounded, heartbroken, bruised, you know, battered. It simply continues to expand because the purity is intact. Whatever physically it's happening or has been happening, it's just in a way, it's like a transgression into something greater because the purity is that alignment with that state of grace that keeps you intact. Okay, so I was privileged, like I said, because we were so early snowed in, that I had a few days to really feel and process this energy, to really just be with myself, to go out a little bit on the snow, to be indoors, and to feel what's, what's, what are we really about? What are we really synthesizing at this point from the level of feeling? Because like I said, knowledge in itself can be contained, but wisdom cannot. Because when knowledge is constantly in flux, you know, and, and when you say, okay, you put that book, you put it away, but someone else comes and opens it, you know, and it's, it's, it's a living book. The book of life is a living book. So when you become as such in your own embodiment, you become the most sacred attainment. You become the, the greatest gift of life. And that, in a way, was the synthesis. The synthesis was this level of, of inner union of what I call the cosmic beloved union 
which makes you this vessel for, for purity of spirit. In many cases, what was happening is a lot of us kind of put that aside, you know, the feeling level sometimes because we had so much to share in terms of knowledge or help or healing, whatever in a way you were guided to assist. But sometimes for us to survive, you know, at the level of the experience here on earth, we needed to develop certain, um, it's almost like safety tools or safety key locks. So that means uh, you don't ever lose these feelings or sensations. You know, the depth of spirit is so profound and it's so sacred. It doesn't go away. It's, like a, it's something you store in a box, you know, for safekeeping until the time is right and ripe again for you to reopen that and I feel this was the message of the sacred tree of life that a lot of us a lot of you are now ready to it's kind of like you are the essence of this Christed um, the tree the sacred tree of life and um, I was shown that so I wanted to say that I'm sorry that the message the this update comes a little later it's not at the first of the month you know but it it really it had no chance because the internet wasn't working here for a few days and it was I I literally you know was surrendered to this ultimate experience which simply moves you through life force where the potency is at highest and sometimes we can't share things if something isn't right yet right so I wanted to say that I made a few notes and we're going to go through them. Um, this year when I was tuning into, you know, usually I have so much to write and I'm so hyper and I'm writing and I can't stop writing. But this month I noticed just such a, a deepening of that stillness. And no wonder because, as you know, we began this month with Mercury retrograde. And I'm, I'm always going to tell you I'm not an astrologer. I bring the wisdom of life more through the perspective of the galactic cycles of life more than just the earth-based astrology, although it is very influential for our day-to-day -day lives. But I'm specifically more connected, or mission connected to bring the wisdom through, which is that higher culmination of things that work and influence us beyond just these cycles. You know, it's almost like the energetic shifts we are experiencing here, here on earth. They're so, so diverse. We don't just have solar flares and CMEs. We have certain energetic particles from the cosmic energies. Then we have the geomagnetic energies. There's just so much. But the understanding behind it that when you approach that through wisdom cannot be cultivated without really feeling the, the love behind it. What The reason was always the love. You know, when, when I think of the sacred tree of life, when I draw it or paint it myself, it's always a twin twin tree, which is the twin soul tree of life, which is the masculine and feminine divine is one. Because that sacred marriage is, it's almost like the sum of all sums. It's, it's the essence of life. Because like I said, the meaning and the whole reason for existence is divine love. Um, there's many experiences that we have of love as humans, but the culmination at the essence level is the return to divine love. So I'm going to talk a little bit, and I've, I've talked about this before, about the essence level and moving into the essence level, how you are, how you function when you get to this point. But before that, I just want to give you a short recap of the energy. You can watch other astrological videos or numerological videos because I specifically... Um, and not moving into that. As you know, my focus is different. Uh, and not everyone here is here for the same reason, of course. And there are so many beautiful people doing the work that I'm not going to go into because you can find it online anywhere nowadays. It's so widespread. But I just want to give you a recap to, to see how that influences this, what I'm going to talk about, and this essence level, and this, this ultimate essence level embodiment. Because that, in, in truth, was the synthesis that was the point of origin so it's is the child that once entered into this into this game and then coming back whole you know no matter like i said what was happening and what what you experienced what you crossed um, you know what you came across and what crossed you in a way um, everything was for a reason so beautiful that sometimes we don't see and don't understand so why are people sometimes causing so much trauma and pain and so many trials and tribulations is because they can't always see the bigger meaning, the bigger purpose, because a lot of times our life-driven society is made in a way to keep us always going, always going, right? So now with this energy that this month is bringing to us, there's a lot of this, it's like slowing down. I felt like 
the whole energy slowed down and I was in a way and I'll tell you about this later I was even forced into it I had no other choice through many circumstances and in a way that is such a beautiful experience because in slowing down you will get the kind of guidance that you wouldn't otherwise it's the way you receive it it's different so i felt like a heart opening and like a resurgence of the feelings that sometimes for the level of the work we needed to do i know this goes for me specifically sometimes i had to put aside you know my feelings and what i wanted to experience and my own desires and i said it's okay i need to do this i need to work on this and working on things felt you know it kept me in this passionate state at the mission state but it's not the ultimate you see and that's why this month i am dividing this update i'm doing a separate beloved update this cosmic union update um, because i feel this is so important the synthesis occurs at this cosmic beloved level okay so um i want to do that and i'm going to tell you a little bit about that but in this in terms of the galactic updates for this month i'm going to work more um on this last course so i'm going to tell you why but first i want us to begin at the beginning so i already told you that the energy of this month carries a code of 13 um adding up into four if you know tarot which i'm sure you do because the majority of people now know tarot the 13 is the octave of not just death right uh people we say well that's the death card in tarot or transformation on it has many different levels and in this universal or cosmic union the last course i'll talk about the ascension meaning of tarot which is the higher principle of understanding creation principles through the archetypes of tarot is not in physical events um, even beyond archetypes it's it's a story of creation and truth um so when you when you when you whenever we have this 13 essence is that creatrix principle as well because from that principle there is this constant death and rebirth and life again um, and when it adds up into four you know we get structure whenever there's four there's physicality there's structure which means that when we are physical when we're physical beings there will always be life death rebirth always because that's the law of physicality when the structure it has held at the level of cell and, and the cellular anatomy in a way um this is what is constantly happening but the death in a way for me it's a synthesis because what follows the death as you know in tarot it's 14 which is the temperance and the temperance is that state of divine union it's the sacred marriage and for us to be in that state we have to be in full surrender and the death is surrender because you truly cannot die if you don't surrender you know it's it's not just physically you know when when people are clinging on to their physical lives the soul is ready to go but they don't want to go um although there's differences happening now in the way we we die within one lifetime because the old way was in a way needing to die physically so we could elevate ourselves to a higher spiritual level and then we can come down again you know and repeat and recycle but the new the ascended version is the absolution within your frame of life um, and having a, a, a larger in a way more expanded life um, time or lifespan because there's a different programming behind it so that's the ascension template is no longer this wheel of reincarnation but this spiraling of life when you yourself see when being alive like this benefits you and when it's serving a higher purpose and when it doesn't it's not for the purpose of needing to die to elevate at the higher spiritual level because sometimes the soul can get so in, in some cases right the soul gets so away from the core mission from itself during a physical lifetime that it, it simply it has no other choice but to replenish by going back to spiritual side it at the life when you live a life of ascension it means that constant recycling is happening within your body and that was what life force mastery was all about and why it was so important and those of you who haven't done that yet it's 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 the ultimate it's it's what ascension is about if you don't know what life force mastery means if you can regenerate yourself if you don't understand the principle of sacred alchemy and death and rebirth then it's not ascension you see ascension is not just the path of being more positive being more uplifted than you know otherwise before you were more uh, you know not so receptive or perceptive and it's not just about awakening awakening is just one 
opening chapter of starting to see and feel more. So this synthesis of the death is about realizing, you know, the nature of death and what is its purpose in life. So when we talk about our mission, sometimes things need to die away because we need to make room for that which is perhaps at the higher advanced level. And we don't have to die and go to spirit to start a new life. We start a new life within one lifetime, right? So if you have been feeling or, or you yourself had a feeling like you lived many incarnations in just one life, you felt, wow, I, I, I lived this chapter and then my life was totally different or I lived somewhere else. But, you know, people can move, but they can still be within the same energetic makeup, right? But this is more about you feeling you were different here and then you were a whole new being again and again and this is what this is about um so the death is not just death it's also the synthesis you need to make to get across that temperance which is that sacred divine union or divine marriage so why things are slowing down is because the structure cannot truly be implemented or the body can, the framework cannot be integrated without that synthesis. So the slowing down, and this is when we have now this Mercury retrograde period, is it's almost like when, you, when you're in the energy, which means you are with life force, you're not in the mind. The mind might tell you, well, you have to do this and that, you know, you have to take care of this and this and these provisions, you know, and go do this and these errands, otherwise you're not gonna survive or you're not gonna have your life in order. This is what the mind tells you. But the heart says, but I just want to be in the essence of love. And this is what I felt for this month. The heart is, you know, everything we've, it's almost like we, imagine you are a gas that's, you know, you're like this gas pump that's always uh, producing fuel. And the fuel goes out to, you know, to kind of energize certain things in life which a lot of the volunteer souls, they have chosen to energize. But imagine that fuel is always going to this and to that and to that. And it's, it's such a high intense process that a lot of times we, if we're not a master of life force, we forget to refuel ourselves because we think, well, we are the gas pump. No, we're not really a gas pump. It's just the way we are sometimes, I don't know, we're, we're, we're translating energy this way. You know, it was just a metaphor if you were getting me, but we, in a way, we were the essence of what's being moved through it. And that was this mastery and completion of understanding what it was all about. It wasn't about doing. Uh, it's even something beyond what we say, well, it's, it's the mission. Yes, the mission is how to get this across. And it, it's unique because we, at the essence level, we are unique beings. But now in the slowing no energy, and a lot of you might feel more tired now, I, I know I do. And I can do certain things I, I could do before within one day. And it's winter time. And here in the, in the northern hemisphere, especially if it's very snowed in, the energy can feel like those icicles, you know, they're very static and they're just hanging there. They're beautiful, but they're, you know, they're saving something. And it's for a reason, because when you understand these cycles of life, not just, you know, times of the different month and, you know, times of the year, but more more from the, the galactic perspective, you see how everything is an unfoldment of the journey because the mission is not linear. It is this is this spiraling journey that sometimes you perceive it as chapters of life, but in the bigger picture and the grandiose picture, they are truly dancing. They're dancing. So this energy shift is being really apparent. And whenever people talk about these retrogrades as being bad, it's because they're they're approaching them from the mind because they think they always need to be active. So when the energy comes and says, well, it's time to be a little inactive, you know, chill, <laughs> um, relax, go into your essence, do things slower so that you can feel the essence behind it. Sometimes people are getting confused because our cells can literally be programmed with this, you know, like, drive that's always the same and we can't feel beyond but the idea behind our union is the, the intimacy the depth of feeling is to be feelings that are so rich with feeling that only you being capable of feeling such profound feelings which is not the same as these lower emotions you know but these feelings of, of this greatness of love you can talk about love you know but talk about love and writing poetry where does writing divine beloved poetry comes from it's the essence of love that fuels it so you see it truly is the essence that we're being moved into so these energy shifts are helping us to be more 
that stable tree of life and the tree of life is the tree of love it's the twin tree remember <laughs> so also i want to say this brings us a big cycle completion and it can feel like we're close to the finish line and what does the mind want to do when we're close to finish line oh i need to hurry because you know there's a finish line i can almost see it i can almost sense it i can smell it and i need to run to it as fast as i can mistake <laughs> this is what this month is about is is really feeling that there is no time. There is no finish line. There is a synthesis. And the synthesis, we talk about the synthesis when things are cyclical, when they are spiraling. Because there, it's like parts of you are being drawn back up into the bigger perspective that within the linear framework you can have. In the linear consciousness, you're always chasing your own tail, right? You're always like finding the next best thing and the next goal and the next attainment. While the attainment of spirit is, is eternal. You know, you're always in this awakening and, and rebirth and then again a new part of you awakens and you know there's things that are eternal but in the physical sense of your experience you're continuously drawing them to the surface so i feel that's really good and it shows us that the the true um, approach is not you know hurrying to the finish line because when you get there you're going to see but I, I thought i was racing somewhere and now i can feel it what is it it's usually spirit showing you that that's that's not the multidimensional consciousness and the master of life force approach it's it's still a linear human and as you know i was bringing through these videos to help guide those of you who know you're ready to become a galactic human embodiment and uh, recently you know one before last there was a galactic human consciousness course this embodiment of the true union with your galactic um, path and purpose What's also happening is the energy shift that's really apparent and there's a lot of big cycles if you're going to notice happening in the next year. Um, it's starting now because Saturn now goes into Capricorn for, for a while. It was, I think, a Sagittarius before. Um, but also Uranus, I think, next year is changing signs from, I think, Aries to Taurus. So that means these bigger influential you know, key players are showing us that the more collective storylines or archetypes are changing. But again, we need to see into how this is changing for us or how this is changing us. This year specifically um, was about planting the seed because that's what one is. And a lot of us feel, well, one is when we do everything in you and we need to complete everything and finish everything. Well, remember each cycle of, of, of numerology or if we're looking at it from this perspective goes from one to nine it becomes a ten which moves back into one and the seed planting the seed doesn't mean that we get to finish everything we need to do all our projects and everything we envisioned a lot of us who, who are visionaries we are seers we see things a lot of them come from that which i talk about the essence level and this is the core the core of why you came here but how you get there it's not always so apparent so you imagine let's say living in a certain place or having this house or doing the kind of work or being with a certain someone but it's not always the way you thought it would be so perhaps you don't go from here to here so you might do something this before through gravel something here and then a little go you know a little gathering of something there and this is what it's about it was about mastering this pull, this natural pull of life force where it moves you without thinking through goals and linear, um, you know, assessments and wanting to reach these destinations. So planting the seed, this was the seed year, this was the one year. Doesn't mean now we needed to, by the end of this year, finish everything. Just as well, people sometimes think this month is all about the holidays. Well, that was artificially created, you know, this hype is to keep humans away from that which that month is naturally about. And if you follow the pagan traditions or the old rituals and cultures, this time, especially the time of the solstice, was always related to this inward and the energy, uh, you know, you're being, you're being informed through the core. And I think now, um, I don't know whether, I think it's Mercury and, and Saturn that are now being aligned or were aligned because, you know, it's just activations happening at the degree of the galactic core, which is the galactic center, which is where we're all being informed from. You know, that's the great creatrix through which everything kind of pops out into being. And this informed, you know, this informed consciousness is then carried through the, uh, the principle of the solstice. And I made last year a specific video that in detail, I read you the channeling from the meaning, 
the creation meaning of solstice and the winter and the summer solstice. So please go back one year at this time in December and watch that video because it's very important in that information if you haven't yet. Um, so this time was always a time when you when you culminate in something and that is not a culmination of, of deeds which you know you do just a little bit more and a little bit more and you know it's never it's never over because this awareness that was so programmed in which is just a little more i just need to finish this and just wrap this up and little here and there and you're always chasing your tail and i feel this time is the time to return to the sacred heart the flaming heart of passion which is the feeling level is more important than sometimes the things you need to do. Um, so the symbol, um, you know, goes along. You know, why was this the seed year and then I see a tree as the symbol for this month is because a lot of us, a lot of you are now feeling that the embodiment is there. And that doesn't mean it's the same as, you know, you needed to finish everything physically that you thought you will. It's not the same. But the seed became a tree through the essence level and the embracing of your uniqueness, your unique path, which doesn't mean now it's all, you know, um, it's all happening. No, it's everything, all the light codes, all that we needed to assimilate. For those of you who, who've done this, who walk this path is there. But now there needs to be an opening to an approach of more, like I said, the greater pulses of life to show us, you know, we were now the lead, we were the main actor of our life because we needed to be the master. And now, as I've shared in my previous video updates, when I talked about the new level of mastery, and go check that out if you haven't, um, there is more of this complete surrender, which is, which is new. We all know the meaning of surrender occasionally. But that divine surrender, when the mind tells you, well, you need to do this and these errands and that will get done because it's the way we thought we do things normally and now it's being rewritten completely and it's just different, right? So I have these examples here of what is truly culminating, what's being shifted. And I was writing about the falling away of certain things, even within our mission, because you can only perceive your next step through the consciousness of where you're now. But remember, when you're at the next step, your consciousness is already altered. So how can you make here, at the beginning part, plans for something that's you know further ahead? You can't. And that's the multidimensional consciousness is that wherever you are, the seed, when you are operating at the essence level, the seed carries everything you need to know. But the mind went, but I need to know here and then this and that and that. And otherwise I can make choices in life. I can move forward. I can you know, walk a certain straight line. And the consciousness of the soul says, um, the consciousness within me knows where to go and the life force moves me. And it's a naturally organically informed process. And that process is always begins with the galactic core alignment. That's where our first informational infusion occurs. And last year when I made an Ascension update, I think it was around this time of year or January, I talked about the galactic pulse. And I made a lot of interesting things um, as points, you know, ref of reference to get across. And it's very important if you haven't watched that, go back again one year back. Because this, everything I've talked about then is now coming not just into awareness, but in conscious embodiment. So that's that's the key. That's the, the symbol. And the symbol of the book was, the meaning was that we are now these sacred living books. You know, I have so many books I haven't read here. I, I bought them at a certain timeline and I was doing nothing but these videos for seven years or a little more. And I didn't take a lot of time. You know, when I read, I read just a little here or there. And then, you know, and I can read one book for a very long time, as you know. Um, it's because I didn't take time for it. But a lot of what was important now was to get to the level of embodiment, which was more important than the knowledge itself. Because if you are a volunteer soul, the knowledge is there. You are a living book. So the astrology that goes with it in terms of lunations, I think it's very interesting because the full moon in Gemini, which was just one day ago here, <laughs> if my recording is, is so beautiful because the Gemini is the energy that usually engages with things it's engaging with life but at the same time mercury went <laughs> retrograde so what are we truly engaging with you know and the higher our archetype of the gemini energy is truly that uh, the lovers right in tarot it's the gemini aspect 
which is the return to that inner polarity and to fuse that through the sacredness of the heart of the one. So that was December 3rd. But what's also really cool is the new moon in Sagittarius, which will be December 18th, maybe for some of you different. It depends on where you live in the world. But the new moons in Sagittarius are always the initiations for a new year ahead because Sagittarius is the sign, as is ruled by Jupiter, of expansion. So everything we want to receive for our next level of advancement and expansion. And I still sometimes read, um, I don't know, get across this from other people, what they're sharing. A lot of them are still claiming that unity is when no one is different, we're all the same, we're all already enlightened, no one is uh, different, no one is more advanced, no one is more, um, I don't know, we're just all one, basically. I don't and I cannot absolutely agree with that because we are all equal. We are all divine equals, but we're not the same. <laughs> life could not exist as you see it, full of diversity, if that was true. You know, it, it, life, because of that principle of how life is being carried forth and why uniqueness c contributes to the expansion of source getting to know itself, but at the same time, when we get to know itself, ourselves as source, we're creating. And that was the whole purpose of life. So people who say that don't um, truly acknowledge or they're not mature enough to understand and acknowledge the principle of evolution. And there is such a thing as evolution of soul. And through evolution of soul, there's evolution of life. It's again, it's parallel, it's consequential. So I feel that what we're being informed now is through this alignment with the galactic center and then the slowing down through the Mercury energy, which is calling us to be more still. Um, sometimes we might feel a little more tired, you know, but the thing is, the Mercury retrograde is in the sign of Sagittarius, and the new moon will be in Sagittarius. So there will be an informational infusion. But if you're patient to wait, to move through things a little more calmly now, and don't get too active, and, you know, act out on things through more like impulses and the way you used to do things or I need to do all these errands and I know a lot of people still function like that and you know we can all get bogged down by the the immensity of everything we need to do especially at this time of the year but we're getting it wrong because this time of the year is not you know people say it's an active time of the year and even here in our country we call it the happy December and people want to just hang out and drink with other people and eat and it's not about that it's so funny that the way we we are off like, at large. Um, we are, those of us who are in the knowledge and the awareness, we're re really, really always preparing to be informed. And again, watch my solstice and the creation meaning of solstice so that you can learn how this informational process occurs through the points of summer and winter solstice. So there's also, like I said, a, a culmination and, and there's new cycles being initiated, which I will more talk about next year or at the beginning probably and, you know, as we move further along. But there's a synopsis uh, of 2018. Uh, I think I will move into that at the beginning of January when the new year begins, more from the perspective of the galactic shifts. But I'm telling you now what is important for you to move into the essence level so you can align with these greater uh, revelations and truths that are being shown to you because you know we all want to know things and people are asking about things and you know but we are forgetting the part that needs to integrate a certain level of understanding so that when the information comes you got to be ready if you can't translate that information if you don't have the inner maturity to process that it's just going to remain information and a told you that for years information is not the same as knowledge and knowledge is not wisdom so it's like information knowledge wisdom there's this trinity and it's always intertwining and you know the Gemini energy is the information based energy because it's a very engaged energy you know again it's being ruled by mercury and it's always engaging with something it's a lot of relating and you know sharing here a little pieces from here and there um but you know, the Sagittarius energy, on the other hand, is more mature and that wise expansion through what you were informed with. But you really need that courage sometimes to stand still because we always talk about the courage to move ahead and to be active and proactive and, you know, vigilant and all of that. But we also need to be courageous enough to stand still because nowadays in this society, sometimes it's even seen as a sin if you don't do anything, if you're just you're just like observing for a while. You know, there's cultures that they have harsh winters. People still go for winter sleep. They do that. And 
we, especially in this Western world, we've been programmed to always be on the move. And I can see that here, you know, when snow falls, nature rests, but people do the sports. <laughs> and it's crazy with all the skiing and all of that, you know, everything in healthy moderation. But I want to say that what really makes us galactic humans is to align with the pulse of life rather than living artificially and mechanically because we're becoming more and more robotic when we do. So what truly is being brought to the surface in terms of culmination? I've already mentioned that there will be for every one of you, for all of us, a new mission assessment. And I've told you before, mission is the essence of how you do things, is your uniqueness. And you have many different assignments within that mission. But the assessment means that sometimes even the way you do things will shift. It won't change drastically because it's still you. It's still the uniqueness of you. Um, but different cycles bring different things. And you know, knowledge means change. And change is the power to do things differently. Because you're no longer the same person. You know, the persona is shifting. If you're a being of expansion, it's always going to shift. But the core, the being, the essence remains. And that is why it was so important for us to embody the essence level. That with all the changes, and sometimes it's overwhelming at this, this part of, of how we're living now on Earth. It can, it can just carry us away. You know, the current of collective consciousness can carry you away if you're not a strong foundation, if you're not that structure, embodiment, and the pillar. So this new mission assessment is, in a way, being courageous even when things are falling away. And in the last video, I gave you an example with, with my car and the things. And I felt, when I, when I tuned into the energy, that things are falling away because something in my life is drastically shifting and it's no longer going to be the same. But because you can't always see it, it's like you can't touch it because it's not physical, you sometimes make assumption for what you think it means, but it's not that, you see? So the essence level is and requires the biggest amount of trust. Okay, so this falling away of things is that which, in a linear sense, when you when we still function in a way um, through the mechanical process of being informed through the mind, and the mind, you know, is a part of the collective. When you're being informed through the galactic pulse, you are also a part of the collective. It's just a bigger, wider collective. It's not the collective of human consciousness, but it's the collective of higher expanded consciousness. Um, so you're not just a singular entity or being. You are part of the collective always. It's just a bigger expanded version, if you, if you know what I'm saying. And that falling away means that when you were still in that linear framework, right, you made certain choices and you felt certain things about your life, which now you shifted into this multidimensional. So it's expanding in all directions of time and space from one single point, which is your essence, your core. Then you will see that, you know, certain things that were like linear do not align with that which is multidimensional. And these things are actually falling away. So that is what this is about. The falling away has to be natural and organic. It's not you sitting here making notes and saying, what does need to fall away from our life? It's not about that. It's about the assessment that in each time you know what you know about yourself. Even if, I don't know, a year ago you claimed your mission is this. And you feel kind of like, mm, I have a little guilty consciousness because now I'm doing something totally different. I think people will think I'm a phony or, you know, people do that sometimes. And we fear of making those changes because we're always perceived through a certain filter by, you know, the majority of people still looks at things that way and they like things the way they are. Um, this is not about you changing. Like I said, the persona will always change. Um, you might like to live in the mountains for a while, then you go to live at the sea for a few years or, I don't know, months. But it's the essence of you never changed. It only grew wider because you allowed yourself the expansion. You allowed yourself, you had the reason to grow. And that is the aspect of what I said. A lot of people neglect the part of evolution of soul, evolution of life. So... Um, the, also, what is important is the new body. I want to talk about that, the culmination of moving into the new bodies. Remember a while ago, I gave you an example with the hair. And I was literally shown this because I was thinking of the example when, you know, people change their lives. And sometimes people shave their head, right? Or really cut their hair or, you know, to just shave the whole hair off. And I really was seeing that when you cut the hair, even if it's really short, or you kind of, you know, take a razor and <laughs> swipe it off, you don't change the genome structure. You know, you cut the outside layer off, but the hair still has the same root, 
okay? So when I give you an example of hair falling away because the, the genome is changing, the structure of the, it's like the gen genetic programming is changing and it has to do with the new body. And I've recently heard, um, I don't know where, someone calling it a name. Was it uh, the innate or the inner body? I don't know, but um, it's like the mystical part of, of your of your body which sometimes we don't understand and that part knows what it's doing so you you don't understand why things are falling away or where you're changing certain things in your body but that part does and that's that I, I call it the new body I don't call it any other name but for me that's the new that's the that light informed body um, so when there is a literally falling uh, falling out you will have to grow the new root the new everything and when you are within that change the changing structure of the DNA, which is beyond the repair or the regeneration, but it's a total renewal because it grows anew. So imagine your tree, the tree of life, we've talked about the sacred tree, is being informed now at the essence level. It no longer has other influences, which means that which was still influenced from the other, and it's not its building block or its building foundation was not at the essence level it has to fall away because it needs to make room for the new so you can't just cut it out uh, you know at the surface level you have to go to to the root and it's the same with the energetic structure of the patterns like the rooting it out um the weeding out so it's not at the level of our new body things are not about repair anymore a lot of people were healing through uh, you know still through this aspect of repair, repairing something, making it better, the betterment of, of our being. Well, that truly does not come from the essence level because the essence level is always being informed from that which I say the pulse of life and the pulse of life that is the uniqueness of you as well. Um, your I am presence and your spiritual body. So this complete renewal can only happen when you're brave, when you understand that Sometimes you have to lose something completely to gain something on the other level. Instead of saying, no, I need to keep a little bit of that and keep it growing. I want to modify it. I want to change it a bit, but I don't want to, you know, alter it from scratch. Um, for us to understand what does it mean to be, you know, it's almost like having new genes. It's kind of weird to say that because it's not exactly like that. But to be genetically modified. It takes courage. And like I said, it's not just the courage to do things. It's also the courage to be inactive, you know, um, because we always talk about courage in terms of people who are brave enough to change things. But where does change really come from? It's the creatrix principle, right? So when you talk about the nature of stars, which are giving us the light and the light of the sun, which is informing us through light, but all light is, is birthed through the galactic center, which we say, wow, it's this massive black hole. We don't even know what it is. Exactly. So we haven't even mastered the dark matter. Have, have you recently heard the news how it's, you know, everything is crumbling down and falling apart and Spirit is showing you, well, people are not ready. It's not going to unfold until people are ready to understand these things, not just from a, trying to dissect it physically and trying to understand the laws of, of creation physically, like it's just something new to write in textbooks, but to really open up spiritually. So the spiritual component has to be present before a new foundational understanding happens. So this, this new body, this template of new consciousness that moves through, and those of you who were doing, or you, you did the course Life Force Mastery that I um, created, you started to notice changes in your body. If you haven't yet, you will. So if you're guided, you can take that course. It's For me, it's one of the most important ones I've ever put out there. Um, but it, it allows us to move and slow down to feel our body and to feel every part of, of kind of like mirroring you. And I will give you an example in my own life I had for one month now. And I don't talk about these things publicly because they're my life. They're my, my things. And they're my messengers. And they're showing me things about my path, which is different than I share publicly. But I will sometimes give you some of the examples if I feel it's necessary or it can benefit someone perhaps who's hearing that. And I had issues um, with my back for a month. But it's not, you know, that outside back pain when you do something, you know, it just, you know, kind of broken back. It has to do with the nerve. You know, I have this, um, when you have this nerve system here, and I think there's a name for these nerves that go in, they, they go into spinal discs. And I was doing some research too, 
But I was actually shown how simple it all is because when you think of the nerve, right? The nerve, the nervous system is that which translates that electricity to our body, which we say, well, it's 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 a charged reaction that will make us do things like you know, you know, do moves and do do anything. Anything is controlled through nerves and then of course you go further and back into the hormonal um, control through the body and then you go back 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 and the energetic meridians and the chakras and all of that but this is not about that this is not for us to understand our bodies because they are complex but as humans we also need to embrace the simplicity through which our bodies speak to us through simple alignment with Okay, what is the essence of this, right? Again, in our bodies, it's the same. What is the essence of, I don't know, spinal nerve here or there? What is this trying to tell me? So I've actually seen a picture of me because I'm very hyper. And I said, of course, I'm hyper. I'm always so electric. So the electric part, which is the charging through these nerves that carry the information forward, was saying, ah, you know, no longer. And we were doing some Reiki. And my mother actually had a vision of the nerve which was something's causing this painful reaction. I couldn't, I couldn't backbend at all, uh, you know, and um, I couldn't exercise the way I can usually. And what happened was she saw like that nerve was like sitting like that, you know, like someone lying on the beach. I said, ah, I'm on a vacation, right? And I thought, well, that's just symbolic for the inner essence of me, which is always hyper. It's always doing, it's always providing something. And I was tired from it. And that part of my body was just showing me, look, I'm tired. Just give me a rest. Give me a break, okay? And we sometimes take things like we call a disease and this and that, and we want to dissect it from every angle. But we're not approaching it at the essence level, which is so simple. And then at the essence level, when you understand what it is, you internalize with that aspect of you, giving you information through the body system or an organ or a different part of your body. You're going back because you've, you've embraced that within yourself. You've internalized it and therefore you know what it needs. You know what to give it. So you can make an actual change. And when you start acting that way by being informed about it, you start to see an increased level of feeling like you should feel, which is pleasant and, and good. And sometimes if you're not stopping yourself, the body will stop you. And we call it disease. Well, in some cases, it can get so drastic that it becomes a disease, but it begins as a simple symptom, which is an aspect of you showing itself through an aspect in your body. So when you go to the essence level, it means you don't just say, I know I have this innate, the inner mystical body, you know, this thing that just knows what needs to produce and work on. And, but that part in the human structure and the human genome was so long programmed to age us in a certain way you know lifespans were shorter we need to go back to spirit or we need to do these things we are aging that it was cellularly encoded so for us to change that and this is what we do through life force mastery because now we're being informed through life force not through this um program that we've initially planted which was for a reason until it served us but when the evolutionary process is no longer served by that or through that, it becomes a waste. It becomes something that is a blockage and it hinders your growth. So we need to start talking through our body and working with the cellular structure through life force infusion and life forms, uh, life force um, informational infusion. So this reprogramming can only occur at the essence level and you can't get to the essence level of the body without knowing what life force is without even feeling it you know people say i'm feeling good or i'm feeling that way yes but what is the raw nature of life what is it if you can't allow it if you can't allow yourself to feel because it comes through the passionate uh, you know cycling of that energy of that fuel through your heart so this life force energy mastery was in a way so important and I've talked about it I think now for two years almost and it was a preparation also for what's coming next as in these years of transition where that uh, you know assimilation of light codes will turn into the it's also like dissemination <laughs> yeah in a way a dissemination into the physical and engaging with life in a new way a new format but we really needed to do it from the essence level and that's why this was so important so this was also a preparation for these 11 year of 2018 with the big coming shifts and 
this coming into the essence level where you can do nothing but have this full trust and surrender because imagine people who have physical things and they serve as their mirrors but then there's also people who needed to have um, the advancement of the essence level because they've chosen it they said i will be a master of ascension in this life i will be a master of energy how to express it how to articulate myself and through this universal language of life force so we talk about light language there's different structures and different ways of existence how we can relate to life and creation but beyond anything there is a level called the essence level which is what i call this um, embracing of the translation of the life force through your body Life force is not the same as when you say, oh, I have lots of energy now, you know, in this moment, do I have lots of life force? <laughs> not necessarily, you know, because we have learned as humans to generate energy through different sources. So people can, you know, culminate energy through food. That's why a lot of people think they still need to eat certain things such and such. Sometimes they're very dense, but that's how they, at this carbon body type of embodiment, they've learned to do that. So if you can't guide yourself and your body in this new template no one will do it for you and it won't just automatically happen because people say it's a nomadic change you know these codes of light are happening we're just standing there we're ascending oh it's all perfect no <laughs> because otherwise you wouldn't be here to become a master if you just came into a process that was completely automatic what's happening at the bigger level these cosmic changes, they are in a way automatic. And even when you see the bigger picture, it's not even that as automatic because it's all driven through higher forces of life and creation mastery through the beings that are complete creators, okay? This creative consciousness. So nothing is automatic in truth. Um, what is called, what can be called and referenced as automatic is the way it's so effortless because it's so masterful that we say, wow, that's automatic. So it's not automatic as when we're, we're being passive and we're just witnessing these things happening. We're witnessing many things and yet we're needing to engage with the process and we can't engage with the process if we don't have an understanding of it. So that's the reason why knowledge is important because the information brings us to the knowledge which when we will embody it, when we'll go through the metamorphosis, through the alchemy of the process itself, we will come out at the other side, we'll come in this transcendence um, level and we will we will master it and wisdom will grow from it and wisdom is like I said an always open book that's the truth of wisdom and I think I have I made my own oracle a few years ago it's called the oracle um, the cards of the illuminated realms of truth and I think the the wisdom card was this golden white open book so that's what wisdom stands for knowledge in many cases can be closed or can be open but the essence hasn't, the knowledge that hasn't yet come back at the essence level, which is wisdom is held at the essence level, hasn't yet, you know, birthed at what we call wisdom. And the last thing I want to talk about here in this video that is already so long is what is also being so important now is to work at the absolute level of gratitude for not just what we did or accomplished, you know, or how other people see us. It's the gratitude, it's just gratitude for being here. It's the gratitude for this, what I'm being shown is the gratitude for this universal wisdom, the gratitude for the value, because you know, people talk about abundance and yet we forget to talk about gratitude and yet they go hand in hand. So everyone nowadays, it's so important, everyone wants to be abundant now, everyone wants to have money, everyone wants to earn money in the spiritual ways, blah, blah, <laughs> we all heard that. Um, but money in itself is just one extension. It's not abundance itself. And abundance is not even true abundance without gratitude because you, you can have things, but the gratitude is when, when you're simply at that humble state where you're just like, wow, look at everything that's been created through me and with me and, you know, as an extension of me and life force of all. And I can witness this. And it's so humbling. And a lot of people have not had that humble, humbling experience in their life. But it is so deeply profound, the way it moves you, that you cannot not be grateful. It is so beyond. And remember, the value, the values that we have for certain things are what aligns us with the abundance of that new. So whether it's the old values or the new values, because the new values are the values of consciousness. 
The old values are the values of structure and of power and possessions. But to value consciousness, to value the gift of truth, of life, is something that's beyond. And that's why we can't even put it in terms of money. And that's why a lot of the things I do and I talk about, they're so sacred. I can't put a price on it. And yet there's things I need to do. I also need to live and have sustenance in this form. So I do services and I do certain courses that I can't you know, just offer freely because I so would. I would be so inclined to. Um, but there's certain regulations still when we're in this um, you know, transition period. And what I'm being shown is that because I had a dream, I have to tell you about this. I had a dream that I think it was, I was corresponding with this, uh, I think it was a woman. And she was someone who had lots of, I think she was also a wise person. I don't remember much, but it was this woman. And every time she wrote me a letter, she also wrote me like, it was like a check, right? It was like money came with it. But it was always like in a certain amount, like little droplets here and there. All of a sudden, I remember I got a letter from her and the amount was like 10 times bigger. And I was like, whoa, what is this? You know, and I was asking myself the next day, what does this dream mean? And I was shown that even the way we see abundance can get static and linear because we think, OK, we're doing this. We're creating this. It's we're doing it for money. We're doing this. But those of you who've stayed and you've remained unconditional and you've remained present with with the services which is serving life which is serving life force being informed through life force when you are informed through life force abundance is a natural byproduct because life force is nothing but pure life and life is abundance and how can you not be abundant when you're infusing yourself only with light and the purity of life itself so people who are still in a way experiencing um, you know discontent or they're experiencing the lack of abundance or fearing for it or it's it's just it's just a memory it's a memory of this old records that um, you don't have an understanding of what's the true value and how to attain it so that's why I said the life force mastery is so important in that course I created because it helps to align you with where abundance truly really comes from and it's from life force life force can create everything through you and yet we're fearing that and we don't trust it. So we say, no, I need to do it my way. I need to do it structurally and I need to have control over it and this way and that way. You don't trust and that's what you get. That's how you receive things. But it's not that universal abundance. So I made last year also a new abundance paradigm video, which you can go back to because I've explained what that alignment with humility and divine sacred service and life force infusion that keeps you in, in its state of flow. And again, abundance can have something you can attach to. And it's not even about physical things because you can have physical things. You've all probably been there. And it's interesting for five minutes and then you put it aside and your heart is still empty. And you say, oh, oh but I, I really truly need that. And that doesn't come because you're kind of in that I'm waiting for that um, energy instead of I'm creating that. So when you are at the essence level, the way the values within yourself changes, the values you put to things, that that is what you will enrich. That is what you will infuse with life or the depletion of it. And just recently I was talking to someone. I have to read it actually for, to all of you guys because I've actually addressed the importance of talking about the abundance um, and the gifts and gifting ourselves because... People still haven't realized that the more you gift people, and it's not always with physical things, but with your unique cultivation of everything that's within your soul, the more you will have. But because people don't trust that, they don't give, and they remain at the one side of the equation or other way around. So I was shown through that dream that the level of abundance, when we are completely merged with the essence level, can grow immensely. And that doesn't just mean, you know, the numbers of money. <laughs> But it means we have to see that uh, we can't put a, a, a like a mark on it, like a certain amount on it, because abundance doesn't have, you know, this month I get or each month I get this and this amount of pay. I don't get paid, you know, Me meaning to get paid per, per month is safety because you know how much you're going to get each month and it's safe. But life force infusion, when you don't know where and how it's going to come through, it's risky. And that's why most people don't, uh, they don't want that or they're not feeling ready to incorporate that and therefore they don't give value this higher value to that so I want to read you this beautiful um, I was talking to someone as one of my supporters uh, very few people that do that but um, and <clears throat> I want to read you because it was expressed with such heartfelt um, 
gratitude and appreciation and I want to also with that thank those of you who have been supporting me or have been I don't know either being um, a patron of mine or patreon which you know people sometimes come and go and you know <laughs> it's just I understand that I do because the value we place um, it's either devoted to that or not and people are usually not you know interested for for a short time and then not and that's okay there is no judgment in the way we live our lives but what we value we have to understand and we'll cultivate even i i can have the greatest passion for a mission and for service and i can still you know wither like a dead rose if i don't get energy reciprocated i don't get as equally motivated and seen and recognized if people don't value what i do if people are perhaps sometimes only saying, well, thank you, and then they go away, you know, they put values to something else instead. And that's why this letter means so much to me because it's truly written from someone with a pure heart and, in a, you know, an old soul who understands the value in these things. And it's important to start gifting ourselves, to understand that the more you gift, not just give, but gift, which is the pure unconditional, because giving can also be conditional, but when you gift life, it's unconditional and it's service oriented and you know that you're helping to contribute with to that with with your love so there's people who see money things like that as evil and tainted or whatever okay you know perhaps if it's used in the wrong way it's not so black and white and yet there's people who see that when they share or exchange with someone they're sharing their love if that's what they think wow that that person needs or requires sometimes it's your company sometimes it's your gentle word whatever it is but you know just like i told you before even us who are here as guides and missionaries <laughs> we also get tired we also can wither we also have our moments when we go oh, does it just never end, you know? And when these moments come, we need to really align with that. Okay, um, you know, how can I see the unconditional, the unconditional aspect to what I'm doing? And I've always, even when I had a lack of support, I didn't have much support from people over these years, you know, in the way I thought I could have. So it can be more, um, not so much worrisome for me. It could be more effortless. I could just and do more and give more if I had that provided for me. So um, for me, it was also difficult in many ways because once someone wrote, wrote to me and they said, you know, you look so far, far out. You look like you've had it all figured out and you're oh, so rich and that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they said, you have it all together. And it's like, I'm still a human. You know, I'm still living a physical life. You know, um, I have to be here in order to get these messages across and to do the energetic work. And that's why for me, letters like this, the appreciation coming through, it means so much to me. And I want to read it to you as a gift to all of us, those of you who've been tuning into my videos for a while, to see how it feels to see the value in the things that are beyond just gift physical thing for a physical thing. You know, you, you see a crystal, you buy it. Wow. You know, it's, it's easy for us to do that. But things that are they're unseen, we, we can't kind of put a price on it. And that's why the majority of things I have, um, uh, the, the way I offer, I, I leave it open to donations because I can't put a price on things like that, you know. Sometimes even with the courses I have, it's difficult. And I always want to keep it at, at the best, you know. <laughs> so I can still stay alive in the physical and it can at the same time be uh, affordable and available to people who want to learn about these um, things you know that i came here with my gift to share so i want to read you this and uh, the reason again is that gratitude and the understanding of reciprocity and the gifting the gifting because the gifting will motivate it will move the energy and it will motivate not just the other person you are gifting but it will motivate you too so it's how you keep the energy alive it's how you keep it flowing okay so this is someone i truly I truly um, admire this person. They're really a sweet being. So the person said, You are a master teacher who has provided me with the wisdom and awareness so that I can now see the bigger creation picture from a truly galactic perspective. There are many teachers, and yet you are so different from all the others by far. I'll leave it at that, but I will say that it thrills me to have you a master and pillar of creation as the guide and leader of our soul group. 
It sometimes saddens me though, and I don't understand why people often spend lots of money on personal entertainment, especially in December, right, Christmas time, yet still are unable to find it in their hearts to provide any type of exchange whatsoever for all your dedication to helping us. We aren't speaking of momentarily thrills here. We're talking about soul knowledge that transcends far beyond our current life cycle. There was a time when people would give up everything they owned and do almost anything to acquire universal wisdom of soul, body, and spirit. And that's true. You know, they devoted their whole lives to it. Now it's like, oh, it's here, it's there. You know, everyone's doing the videos. Doesn't mean it's, it's the truth, right? Anyway, um, thank you for helping me transform my life through your divine wisdom. So... Thank you as well. And thank you for all those of you who've ever been supporting. I think this is already such a long video. I'm so sorry. You know, I will do more. I won't do as many videos this month because that's the guidance I received. I have to really pay attention to what is important to get only to the essential things because the essence is the essentials. And um, I have, however, or I will create, if it's not yet available, just check the link down below when, when it is available because um, it might not be at the exact moment of this video, but please check in. Uh, it's a light activation I received. I just have to record it as a channeling of the cosmic remembrance and stepping into this you know, when, when you start this life, you go, it's it's like you go into this hall or the cave of creation and get your own essence level um, template. And this is what the activation is about, to activate this galactic memory and to step into this cosmic remembrance. And there is also what I've shared with you before, for those of you who feel so deeply you are in the path of a volunteer soul, there is a mini audiobook called The Cosmic Training for Volunteer Souls. Um, this is all to integrate our cosmic uniqueness, to understand that, like I said, there is such a thing as soul progression and evolution and things we need to master. At the level of essence, we, of course, we're one. We always will be one. But there is also something that makes us so deeply unique and we are equal in, in, in that. So again, remember this month is about engaging with yourself, tuning deeply into yourself. Our new bodies are being so spiked at this moment, it almost can feel like, well, for me, like the body is in its incubation stage. And that sometimes can be difficult, especially with harsh winters like that. And the body needs more rest. Um, and when we are integrating, remember, always drink lots of fluids, water, fluids, whatever, and lots of silica. Silica, as you know, it helps to integrate these um, uh, crystalline frequencies. And what I want to also say is, yes, again, preparing for the last, uh, ooh, I'm so excited, the last mastery course on the Cosmic Union and Ascension. So I'm going to do last videos and last work. I'm also being shown um, some study mode. If you are guided to do the same, there's new things that will be coming in, especially around solstice and after Mercury retrograde. Until then, we're, we're almost like preparing the vessel for what it will receive. Watch my solstice video from last year. It explains everything in great detail. If you haven't already, take the Tantrica Life Force Mastery course. I also have the Galactic Human Embodiment, which was the last one, um, the 11th Initiation, and the Cosmic Dance to really get that life force flowing through your physical body attainment. So we're going to talk more. Like I said, I'll do a separate Beloved update as well. And then we'll see what December brings. But please don't be upset. I really need more rest than usual this month. So... I work all the time energetically, and like I said, this was who this was this was like uh, being pushed into more rest, and I really felt my heart needed that because in some of the aspects, you know, the things I didn't tend to because I was always so much driven and hyper and giving to others. Sometimes I neglected a little bit of myself, and the heart said, "Please, you know, we need to feel these new feelings, so we create this." sacred bubble of love space for what is going to be birthed. And remember a while ago, I shared with you um, this light activation I had during my dream state, an altered dream space where the beings of light have told me that I was very hyperactive and I need to slow down for what's coming next. And I said, well, what is this? And they said, I'm not going to tell you yet. It's not time. And I was like, okay. So we have to go with these impulses, with these intuitive knowings that we just know it is so and we will be okay we're going to be taken care of so relax this month take it easy don't be so serious it is very important for us to engage with our playful side because when we're being playful our inner child is the growing human within us the awakened the enlightened illumined human that 
is informing itself through being more present on this planet and loving to be present here wherever you are, whoever you are with. It needs to come from a genuine space of that depth of feeling. And sometimes it's just the simple things, you know, like uh, a day ago, I think I was throwing snow and I was trying to photograph it and I didn't know, but it was always like, you know, <laughs> in my face. And I was just laughing. It's, it's the silly things. But these things are not truly silly. They're, they're vital. We can't just knowledge 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 grow 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 we have to cultivate um things for them to truly mature and and you know people who are sometimes very fast they can be fast thinkers but these people never bring things to the root level so they might have accumulated lots of stuff but you know what happens when, when you can't apply your stuff it, it becomes a waste right you have in your space lots of waste and i have to tell you i've been nothing but cleaning and clearing and for the past week or so, you know, I always do that when the energy is coming, new energy and preparing for the shift. Because remember, physical things, if items in a way or things somehow no longer feel right in your space, it's not just about feng shui, you know. It's about the way energy is being channeled through everything. Everything is is in a way something that can harness energy or not. So if something is there and it blocks the optimum translation of that energy, then you will feel it. And if you're very energetically sensitive, it will be like, ah, like inner agitation and feeling a little irritated by it. So just watch what comes through for you and what your soul wants you to cultivate this month because it is not just a month of death and a walking away of things that no longer bring that cultivation but it is making space for the new and that is where we're here so i hope to see you again very soon thank you for staying tuned as always with so much love wisdom and power and make sure to check out for the activation when it's available the link will be down below and of course it will be on my page um, on the section called light activations for you to have that cosmic remembrance and tuning into the essence self and you can stay updated on my blog as well it's called Di diary of the essential pioneer and my webpage so thank you so much i'll talk to you soon have a beautiful month